Okay. So Cecilia, um, thanks for your time today. And we might be joined by some other partners along the way, uh, perhaps Eileen, maybe some other folks if they have opportunity to, uh, to call in. Um, but this is being recorded also just for those folks who are able to join us uh, live today. So um, uh, we'll take a little bit of time together today to talk through uh, the chronic disease electronic management system together. And we want to keep it, you know, open for conversation as we as we move along. And so, Cecilia, as you have questions, uh, please uh, let us know. And as you do ask questions, I'll be sure to repeat them here on on my end just to make sure that all of the audio is recorded. Um, I wouldn't want any of your questions to go uh, unnoticed in the recording. So. Um, uh, so you've got uh, four of us from today from the Office of Health Services Research. There's myself, uh, Adam Baus, and we also have Cecil Pollard, Mary Swim, and Samantha Shawley. So I wanted to, um, I know you've not had the chance to talk uh, to, with everybody, so I wanted to uh, just take a moment to uh, allow you to introduce yourself first off, and then we could tell you a little bit more about us. So, uh, Cecilia, would you uh, like to start us out? Okay. Hi, all. My name is Cecilia Primo. I'm from FSM working at National under Diabetes Program. I'm the data specialist. Okay. And so you've been, you're, are you relatively new to your position there, or has it been yes. a Yeah? Okay. Uh, I've been here for a year now. Okay. Well, great. It's great to get to know you a little bit, and we're looking it's forward to... to know you all. Oh, thanks. We're looking forward to uh, seeing what all we can accomplish together and how we can... Uh, can partner with you. So um, on our end, I'll let Cecil start us out with uh, his intro. Hi, I'm Cecil. We met in Arkansas. Hi, Cecil. Yes. <laughs> Good to talk to you again. <laughs> Glad we got this started anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Cecil, for this opportunity. And Mary? Um, hi, I'm Mary. I'm the computer programmer, so hopefully there aren't any problems so I don't have to fix anything. <laughs> <laughs> there's, hi, Mary. There's, hi. there's always something to fix, I'm afraid. Right. Um, and, and Samantha? Hello, I'm Samantha Charlie. Um, I'm their newest employee and I am the project coordinator for our office. Okay. Um, so Cecilia, we've we've talked a little once before. I'm Adam. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy the kind of work that our office does, um, and I, I try not to let on so much for fear that someone's going to take my job away. But um, reduce yourself. Or, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, we we have a, a pretty long history of working with a variety of different kinds of partners in, in healthcare. And I think in a nutshell, what we try to bring to the table is, um, you know, a good thoughtful approach to collecting data and um, the ability to make good use of data that's being collected. So, you know, that's what CDEMS is really all about is collecting a few good uh, metrics for the purpose of, of good patient care and quality improvement. Um, so what we have today is is more about the registry and um, it should be a good introduction but we certainly wouldn't want today to be the end of the discussion so as you have questions feel free to, to, to say them at any time and um, or if there's other larger issues that we come across during the meeting That'll just be good uh, topics for follow-up as we continue to work together. And bef before I, we get too far, I wanted to uh, acknowledge Gwen Hosey. 
Um, she's been uh, a fantastic, you know, lead in these efforts, and we're very tickled and happy to work with Gwen and the uh, PCDC. So uh, thanks for having us as partners, and uh, we look forward to uh, doing some good work together. So, um, hello, was there, was there a question or a comment? No, it's uh, my chief, he just came in. Oh, good morning. Yeah. You cannot hear your guys, I'm on your phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so no. Okay. So, um, I, I think we've already covered uh, the information about our office, but... Um, so we're in the School of Public Health at, at West Virginia University, and like I, I mentioned a, a couple minutes ago, our, our mission is simply to help improve the delivery of health care and, and ultimately health, health outcomes uh, through good uh, informatics, which is data tracking and data use. Um, a lot of our, our work centers on uh, coaching uh, primary care and using clinical data for population health. So, in, you know, while data are essential for patient-by-patient -patient care, sometimes for partners it's a newer concept to think through how they can use um, data on groups of patients. So that, that notion of population health. And overall, we, we help our partners move through a process of not just collecting data, but, but turning that, those data sets into information or knowledge that can be acted on. Um, so you know, we never uh, condone collecting data just for the sake of collecting data. Um, how the, those data sets tie to uh, patient engagement, community engagement, and outreach are, are very important uh, things to think through. So that's, that's a little bit more about what we do. So we would do a lot of work inside West Virginia and also in our region and obviously outside of uh, our borders as well, so uh, glad to be working with you. Let's see. So here's a, a short outline of, of what we'll cover together, and I want to take a quick look at the time because we were a little late. So we have about a half of an hour um, to work together through these topics, and, and I know that there, that's not much time to cover a lot together, but I think it'll be sufficient for a good introduction to the registry. So um, things that we'd like to cover with you are some questions to consider when starting up a registry. Um, and we can go through um, how to do a registry startup and, and maintaining that system. And we'll take a look at some of the core features of CDEMS, such as the progress notes, the graph results, there's flow sheets and goal letters for the patients, reminder letters for uh, providers and patients. Um, I think one of the strong suits of CDEMS is the reporting features, so we'll start to look, in, look at the reporting. And everything within the registry is also customizable in terms of the data that you're tracking and how you're choosing to report those measures. Um, and we also have some tips on best practices in terms of using a registry and supporting your partners who are, are using CDEMS. So, Cecilia, does that sound like a, a reasonable set of things to cover together? Yes. yes. Okay. So, I've been with this office for about 14 years. Um, again and again, over time, I see the, the need for folks to think through really what data they're tracking and why. Um, in, in your case, I know that diabetes is a priority, um, and that's, that's fantastic. Um, so you know what conditions you're tracking, but thinking through, are there other comorbid conditions that might need to be tracked, and, and really what which data points are absolutely essential to what you want to accomplish as a, as a collaborative. 
Um, and maybe those things are already spelled out. Um, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Um, sometimes there's um, uh, a bit of a laundry list in terms of historic data that have been tracked for a long time, and that's good. But you know, are there are those still the right measures to be tracked? And you know, maybe these are questions that don't even need to be asked. But I think that they're good to to check in on anyway. So, which data do you need to track? Which health conditions do you need to track? Um, in your in your clinics, um, also thinking through whether your sites are tracking everybody with diabetes that they see, or whether they're starting out uh, with more of a population of focus, which would be a subset of that of that total patient group. Um, and again, these questions might already be answered, but maybe they're not, and they could be good to uh, think through. Um, CDEMS runs on Microsoft Access, so making sure that your partners have uh, the, the software that they need to, to use the registry is also important. Um, the registry really has minimal requirements. It doesn't take a lot of space. It, do, it doesn't take a lot of memory to run on a computer. Um, so it's, it's really flexible. Um, and it has been around for a while. It, CDEMS is not uh, a full-blown electronic health record. You know, it's a registry, and, and by definition, it's designed to track a smaller set of indicators for a very specific reason. So, um, you know, a registry is all about putting your data to, to good use. So, again, thinking through what data elements you're going to track, that's really important. Um, the registry can be installed on one computer and one computer only, or it could be networked at multiple workstations across different locations. It just depends on the kind of uh, network that the, the clinic or clinics happens to have and what sorts of resources they have available to do that sort of thing and really what their needs are. So sometimes maybe it's totally fine that the registry is only installed on one computer and that could work well given the right circumstances. At other times it might need to be installed at multiple computers in the same building or the same clinic. It just kind of depends. So you know, just knowing more about your partner's needs um, is important. Uh, a lot of the technical support that we provide here isn't always so much computer-based, but more about operations and thinking through how the registry is going to work, um, helping with troubleshooting and just um, understanding if it's not working for somebody, figuring out why that is, and then backing up and working to fix it. So maybe it's an issue in training, maybe there are computer problems, maybe there's problems with buy-in or people just, you know, not really wanting to do it because that happens too, right? So you, just knowing your partners and, and where the problems are are awfully important. Um, and we do highly recommend that before, that before getting started with the registry, uh, that there's some training that happens, and, and we're glad to help with that sort of thing and make sure that you're comfortable using it too. And really mapping out a, a plan for how it's going to be used, that that registry implementation plan is pretty important. Um, we've seen lots of scenarios where there's a lot of interest in using CDEMS and, and forward momentum, but no plan on how it's actually going to happen. And without a plan, it probably won't happen. So um, that's, a, that's a good thing to consider also before getting started. Um, and Cecilia, you'll have to forgive me if, if some of these questions or issues are not um, applicable to you. Uh, I'm still learning uh, about what it is that you do and the partners do. So you'll have to forgive me if any of the, the questions that I bring up just aren't relevant. And you can say, hey, that's not relevant, and I'll be good with that. <laughs> But I'll pause there for a second. Show, so don't worry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So start uh, starting up the registry and also really maintaining it. Um, we generally do all that we can to find out what data are already available, and 
we do our best to make sure that if it's at all po if at all possible that our partners aren't starting out with you know an empty or a blank registry um, there's a lot there's a variety of different sources of data that could be imported into CDEMS um, yeah, among the partners in our group here I, I know that there are some I think there are still some PEX registries registry or registries out there um, we do have we can import PEX data into CDEMS thanks to some fancy footwork from Marion building a tool to do that um, some of our partners here in West Virginia use electronic medical records so often those systems are really good in collecting data but really bad at reporting so um, you know importing those electronic medical records data into CDEMS for the sake of supplemental reporting is something that we do pretty commonly and in that in that case we're not doing things that the EHR would already do we're, we're figuring out how we add value to the system that's already in place and then again that's a strong suit of CDEMS is the reporting um, I don't know if this is something that would be available uh, in this case, but uh, we can also import laboratory data. Uh, if that's an option, we'd be glad to explore that with you. Um, we'd be glad to explore any of these options or others with you that might be uh, important, but just not on this little short list. Um, but suffice it to say, if, if there are data that are available, we'd be glad to look at that with you and figure out a plan for pulling those data over into CDEMS and saving partners some work in um, starting up a, a registry or maintaining it. Um, if there's anything you wanted to add to that, Cecil? So far, so good. Okay. Mary? No? no sounds good to me. Okay. So maintenance, maintaining the registry, um, you know, we like our, our partners to stay happy. <laughs> so... Uh, any any opportunity we have to decrease hand entry of data into CDEMS, we we try to do that. Um, it's not always an option, but it but if it is, we we do aim for that. So the maintaining the registry can be done completely by hand, or it can be done in combination with hand entry and importing data, or it can be done solely by importing data. It just matters it just depends on what you know the situation of that particular clinic is like um, and for all these questions um, thinking through what that workflow is going to look like for the clinic is, is very important um, some of the sites that we work with in West Virginia are very very small oh Cecil I just wonder uh, Cecilia do, do you know what he's talking about when he says importing data uh... Is it like uh, when the data is on the, uh, the Excel sheet yeah. and then you import it to yeah. the register? Yeah, thanks Cecil. Yeah. And, and this, I have... just, uh, if you hadn't experienced that, then yeah. you may think we're pulling magic or something. No, thanks Cecil. That's a great question. And Cecilia, I apologize if I was getting ahead of myself there. No, but... I was kind of... I was thinking about the importing data thing, but that's what I thought. Yeah. And that's what I yeah. if it's right then. Yeah, you're totally different guy. Yeah, you're totally correct. So you could picture yeah. a spreadsheet in Excel. Yeah, it's a spreadsheet. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that spreadsheet is in Excel and sometimes it's in other formats, right? It just depends yeah. on where the data are coming from. So Excel's pretty common. Sometimes it'll be in what's called a, a text file. Uh, or a flat file, which is like more like a Word document, which has to be uh, sort of parsed out. But but yeah, you you've got the right thing in mind. So thanks, Cecil. All right. Um, yeah, and I, I was I was saying a, a, about a minute ago that a lot of the clinics we work with here in, in West Virginia are pretty small, and you know that that's all the more important to know all, all the more reason to know you know how each person that will work with the registry how they they fit into the overall flow and, and making sure that they they understand you know what it means to be part of that team 
um, to make sure that the registry is is current and, and the, the data are good and they're being put to use. You know, nobody wants to collect data just to collect data, but if if your partners can start to see some value in doing it and, and start to see some reports and track their patients over time and see some progress, that's always really um, motivational in terms of, you know, continuing and feeling good about it. So, you know, thinking through who needs to be on that team of folks using the registry. What are their jobs? Are they at the front office? Are they somebody who just is really motivated to do good work and will take the time to do it? Those are all really important questions. Um, but regardless of who's involved, just you know, what we do a lot of is helping make sure that that registry is part of the standard operating procedures of, of the clinic. And that, that's a hard thing to pull off, and it takes time, um, but, it, but it's good work and it's worth pursuing. So the, the progress note. Um, so Cecilia, this is a, a one-page form that looks a little busy whenever you have a lot of variables on it, but before I look, talk through any of these data points, I wanted to point out that what we often do with the progress note is pare it down to just those measures that are being tracked at that clinic. So those required things that every, all the partners really need to track. So the, the progress note is a one-page sheet that shows that nurse or doctor or medical assistant or community health worker, whoever happens to be caring for the patient, it shows them just very basic things. Um, demographic information, contact information, and then you know, you've got in the top left you have information such as when they were last into the clinic, um, what their vitals were, their height, weight, their body, uh, body mass index, waist circumference, blood pressure, just some very common uh, vital signs. Then you have information on their health profile, so you know what health conditions that they have, medications that they're taking, and, and the care that they've received. So if something is overdue, it's flagged. So on this sample progress note, you, you could see at the time the flu vaccine was, it was last completed in October. This is an older uh, slide, I apologize for that, October of 2010. But you can see it's it's uh, starting to get to the point where that would be due again, so it's flagged. And on the far right, you can see in red you have the HDL cholesterol that's flagged because it's a little low. So if there are guidelines, you know, care guidelines that are being followed, these flags can be set to um, highlight those measures as they're either overdue or outside of recommended guidelines. And PEX, I don't know if you've seen the PEX registry yet, but it really works the same way. That there's an encounter note, it has the required measures on it, and it's a summary sheet um, of the most recent uh, information available on that patient, regardless of when it happened. So that's one way uh, of looking at the data in the registry. And some of our, oh, there's also graphs. So on the, there's a second page that can be printed that shows the patient's progress uh, in more of a visual way in terms of meeting goals. So their, their blood pressure and weight are charted out, their hemoglobin A1C, as well as any of the other lab uh, results that you might want to look at. So it's, uh, over, it's a chart over the past two years how uh, those results uh, have been, whether they're good, bad, it just shows the change in values in a, in a graphical way. Um, some of the uh, doctors we work with were not really big fans of the progress note. They thought it was too busy, too much to look at, but what they were accustomed to looking at was more of a flow sheet. So this is a sample of what Mary built to, you know, field that request. Um, so this is you know, the, the same kind of information displayed in, in a, a chart format that's more traditional, at least in West Virginia. Um, <clears throat> so over the past eight, 
the most eight recent visits for that patient are displayed in, in columns. So you can see on March 21st, that patient came in, here's their vitals, um, services that they had, and lab work. And you can see there's March 1st, February 14th, January 17th, November 17th, and so on. So everything that was documented for that patient on each of those visits is just charted out. Um, and on the top, you can see you know, the same information that would be on the progress note their contact information, demographics, health profile, medications that they're taking. Um, so it's the same data, just a different way of displaying it. Um, and that, that's something that's a, a nice feature about CDEMS is that once the data are recorded one time, you can use those data in a variety of different ways without having to do extra work. Uh, and I'll kind of pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, this is a a goal letter or a stoplight letter. Um, Mary built this uh, form uh, through a project that we were doing with the Diabetes Center at Johns Hopkins, uh, their diabetes program. Uh, in that case, they liked CDEMS. They were, you know, they thought the flow sheet was fine, but it wasn't exactly what they wanted. They wanted to see a red, yellow, green stoplight letter that showed that patient in a graphical way how they're doing meeting certain goals. So you can see the blood pressure a little high, so it's yellow. BMI quite high, so it's red. The HbA1c is pretty good, so it's green. So it, it just shows that patient how they're doing and meeting those goals. And they, they were using this as a, a form of um, just having a discussion with the patient. And then it was also something that the patient was sent home with. Um, but it just depends on, you know, how you want to use the data in the registry. In, in the case of Hopkins, this is how they wanted it to be displayed. Um, reporting. And we, I would feel most comfortable taking lots of time with you individually to look at not just the data entry, and the progress notes and the letters and so forth, but the reporting, I could see us spending uh, some more focused time on together. So one of the variety of reports in the registry is called a summary report. So in this uh, slide, we have a diabetes summary report highlighted. So in this case, we would be, in, you, in the top right, you have the start date and end date periods. So for any of the reports in the registry, you can specify the, the time period you want to look at, choose that report, and, and run it. And in this case, the summary report, we'll take a look at what that looks like. Um, there's, again, a, a lot of information on it, but it would be pared down to only those measures that your clinic's tracking. So it gives you a, a pretty global view of what's going on with diabetes care in that clinic for that specific point in time. So in this example, you can see that the, the spot that I always start at when looking at these with our partners is how many patients haven't been in to the clinic in that certain time period. That's always a good starting point for us. So you can see in this case, you've got about a quarter of those patients, 25.5% haven't been in for an office visit. So you can move from that broad piece of information into something much more specific. So in the bottom left, we have uh, a, a patient list. So this is a list of all the 68 people that, that did not come into the clinic during that time period uh, from August 2010 to August 2011. So the summary report's intended to be a starting point in looking at the data where you see something that you want to find out more about and then you keep digging through the data to, to learn more and then put those data to use. So with these 68 people, you can move, you could continue stepping through the data. You could generate uh, reminder letters, you could do uh, call lists and, and have these patients be telephoned 
Um, another thing that some of our partners have been kicking around are ways of texting with patients and, or sending out messages on, over cell phones instead. So uh, again, capture the data once, use it multiple ways you know, going forward. Uh, this is an example of a reminder letter. So some of our, our partners will want to know for everybody with diabetes uh, who hasn't been in to the clinic or who needs a, a flu shot, who needs an H HbA1c, who needs a foot check, some of those basic things for diabetes care. So the registry can uh, generate letters for every patient that does not meet a certain criteria, right? Mm -hmm. So if they haven't had record of a flu vaccine or a foot check or an eye exam or, or if their HbA1c was above a certain threshold, uh, a reminder letter can be generated for every patient that meets that criteria without somebody having to hunt and peck through the whole data to figure out who those patients are. And this is also a place, Cecilia, where we could spend a lot of time together one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. uh, the utility tab in CDEMS is where registry customizations can happen, uh, measures can be added and removed, reports can be modified or built. Um, so there's a lot to this tab and I don't want to uh, gloss over anything. So I think that it would be good, you know, if we plan some more one-on-one -on -one sessions with you as you like and we can look at these sorts of features together so that you have some more experience using this on your own and start to get some comfort uh, doing these sorts of things. Uh, and our, our contact information is also in here, which is kind of handy. So my phone, Mary's phone, and we um, do a lot of uh, support over the web. There's a link to our support desk and um, the user guide and so forth on our office website. Um, modifying CDEMS is pretty easy, actually. Um, it looks like a lot on this screen, but if you take a look, for example, in the top left, you see there's an all possible diagnoses box and then a related diagnoses box. So it's, it's really um, pick and choose. As there's a, a condition that you want to add, to the list of conditions being tracked, you can just take it from the list on the right and kick it over to the list on the left. If there are things that you don't want to track anymore, you can take it from the list on the left and put it back to the list on the right. And there's no um, limit to you know what you can track or it, in terms of how, how many measures you want or how few you want. So the hardest part about this is simply thinking through with your partners, what are we tracking and why? And we, I do really try to spend a good bit of time there in making sure that everything that is included in the registry is really there for a reason. Um, our partners have never been too fond of extra data being tracked if it wasn't being used. So I've just tried to drill that into my head over time. Um, and I can, to kind of wrap this up, a lot of the support we provide does speak to data quality. So, you know, when it comes time to reporting or sharing data, the, the results in the registry are really dependent on a lot of things, right? It, it depends on how good the office flow is for the clinic, uh, how well folks have been trained, how good they feel about doing this work that they're doing. Um, if there's no buy-in, you know, that's awfully difficult and it might not go very far. Uh, but on the other hand, if the reports are being reviewed regularly, if they see a reason for it, um, that helps data quality tremendously actually. And just the comfort level of our partners, um, making sure that their needs are being met, it's very important. And uh, some of those really basic things that you would really need out of um, administering a, a registry would be basic stuff like backing up the data file, you know, making sure that 
the data are secure and safe and that um, if something happens to that data file on one particular day, then it's not the end of the world because there's a, a backup copy that was just created. So those backup data files are awfully important because things do happen. You know, there's, there's storms, there's flooding, there's all sorts of things that happen to buildings and computers over time. So having a good procedure for where those data are being backed up and how is very good to think through with partners. Um, I think we finished in about a half an hour. Yeah, one minute over, two minutes over. Um, so that was a lot. <laughs> I, I, I apologize yeah. for that. But hopefully, I'm going to be quiet in a moment, but hopefully we can use this as really a starting point of working with you in, in a more focused way on some more tangible things that, that we can do together. So I'll pause there. You know, this is Mary. I'll just jump in and say it's, you know, it seems like a lot, but it's best to just start small and find one piece of the registry that you can get comfortable with. Like mm -hmm. I'm just going to learn to enter data for a little while and not even worry about yeah. reporting or uh, mm -hmm. looking at anything. And once that feels a little more comfortable, you can add in the next step and the next step instead of feeling like you have to learn it all today because yeah. that's definitely not true. Yeah, you're absolutely right. right. Yeah, that's right. Cecil, anything you wanted to add? Nope. I just... Uh, I think you've got access to CDEM so you can practice and, and come up with your own set of questions. And we'll yeah. be glad to help you go through it whenever you're ready. Yeah, yeah. we, we really want to meet you where you're, you're at. So um, we'll take it one step at a time with you. And, yes. Yeah. And um, for our next uh, webinar, can I have our IT person to try? You can invite He's anybody. Also in Google. Yeah. And I wanted to learn about the CDMs because he's trying to put the CDMs registry into our Asia. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that, that would be wonderful. Please feel free to invite anybody that you like. You don't need to check with us. Just, you know, if you think if you'd like somebody to be there, go ahead and invite them. All right. And this is recorded if they want to go back. Oh, yeah, this is recorded. How do they access the recording? So uh, for Cecilia, I, and what I'll do, I, I think this would be the best thing. I, I'm going to, I think I see Gwen as my, sort of my hub. So I could, after this uh, session is over, I can um, send uh, Gwen a link to, uh, to this recording. And perhaps she could um, make sure that it gets out to all the partners, or, or we could talk with her also about best ways of uh, making sure that these things are disseminated. Because it, we're fine with whatever works with, with everybody here. I don't have uh, any uh, particular, I don't favor anything in particular there. I just want to make sure that the information gets out. And I don't know whether they already have a web page of information or anything like that that they could use to post it on, or you know maybe we could set up help them set up something. Where yeah, they could have links to different uh, resources. Yeah. Right, and we can also make a if it helps anybody, we can make a a resource page or a downloads page where these things can be posted and and um, um, yeah, and uh, made sure that they're available on the PCDC web page. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Gwen, you have any comments? I'm typing them. Oh. <laughs> They're not showing up. Oh. They're in chat. Okay. I feel I'm not seeing chat. Okay. Well, Cecilia, thank you so much. Thank um, you, Adam. Yeah, that thank was. Thank you, a... Cecil, Mary, Amanda. <laughs> You're I'm sure that this Thank must be guys. an interesting early morning start to your day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, have a great day, and um, feel free to email or, or contact us anytime, and we'll be glad to to work with you on whatever uh, is next. Okay. All right.
thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.